The Speaker of the Filipino Parliament is, by the nature of his appointment, a Marcos man. But like many politicians, he must be wondering how President Marcos can expect the voting population to believe that the January 17th election will not be rigged. Under the Philippines Constitution, a president cannot stand for re-election without first handing over his duties to a caretaker. The president has issued a formal letter saying he is resigning, but he also said in the same letter that he would not do so until 10 days after the elections. In effect, he has simply refused to abdicate, even temporarily. Drumming up support for Salvador Laurel is an easy task these days in the Philippines. Laurel is seen by thousands of people as the man who could end President Marcos's 20-year rule. And while he's not yet the official candidate of the opposition, he's behaving very much like one. The signs are all there. The trip to Washington, the huge personal following, the greeting at the airport by Butch Aquino, the brother of murdered opposition leader Benino Aquino. And contrary to what the Marcos camp must have hoped, it's looking more and more as if the Filipino opposition will go shoulder to shoulder into the battle against the president. That point was underlined by Kino's widow, Corazon. She's been mentioned as another possible opposition candidate, but that didn't stop her from also turning out to welcome Laurel home. And after the VIPs, the jubilant crowd. Laurel took a few minutes to tell them that things are going their way. Finally, to cap a very successful political occasion, a short news conference. And once again, the rallying cry was, United we stand. The opposition leaders met to work out a joint strategy for the forthcoming snap elections. Among those present, Cory Aquino, the widow of the assassinated Benigno Aquino. A statement said she would adopt a low profile in the campaign. I feel out of delicatessa that I should now inhibit myself from further direct personal participation in the task assigned to Justice Palma and myself of designing a formula for the selection of the United Opposition's common presidential candidate, period, unquote. In the end, the opposition grouping agreed at least to contest the elections, but demanded guarantees that they would be fair and constitutional. This last point could prove a thorny one. Already, President Marcos is being accused of acting unconstitutionally by refusing to resign formally before the elections take place. Marcos said he would rather listen to a song than give a speech, so First Lady Imelda obliged. At a news conference later, Marcos spoke about the anticipated verdicts in the Aquino assassination trial. As you know, General Ver is on leave, and if he is acquitted, uh, the leave terminates. Automatically, he is reinstated. For how long, we will decide when we get there. What happens to General Ramos will probably be decided in a meeting of the senior officers.